welcome back to another Swift tutorial. Today we're going to talk about something that is super important when developing for iOS and it's also a very popular interview question for those of you that are looking to do this professionally and that is what the heck is strong versus weak and weak self as it pertains to memory in iOS. So I've got this little diagram here that I found, which I think is a really good example of what the heck this stuff is. So let me just briefly go through this and then we're gonna dive into some code and see some real world applications. So strong versus weak is basically how memory is managed for objects. Back in the day, we used to have to do this manually and now we can just mark things uh, weak or not mark them weak so they're inherently strong and the system manages memory for us. So on this diagram on the left here, we have these two objects and they both point to each other and both things have a reference count of one. When both of these things point to each other, it actually leaks memory. What that means is the system isn't able to clean up a memory or release or deallocate either of these objects because they're cyclically pointing to each other. So when one goes away, it, it can't really actually go away. When one tries to go away, it's like, wait a second, this one is pointing to me. And then consequently, when this one tries to go away, be deallocated from memory, it's like, wait a second, this one's pointing to me. So that's where weak comes in. So we move to the right here, we see that this arrow is now dashed. So the reference count of the guy on the left here is zero, and the right is one. So what we are basically saying is the parent object is retaining the child in a strong fashion. So if the parent goes away, the child goes away, right? And the child is pointing back to the parent in a weak fashion. So when the child basically gets created, it gets created in a format that's weak. So the example that I'll give later on in the video is, imagine you're walking a dog, or the, the example I'll give later in the video has to do with balloons, but imagine you're walking a dog. If the pe person isn't there to hold the leash uh, in an ideal world, the dog isn't there, right? Like the dog disappears. The dog being walked on a leash is dependent on the person object pointing to it. Now, obviously, in the real world, the dog would run away, but we're not in the real world. We're in Swift land. So that said, let me stop blabbering on. Let's take a look at some code examples, and hopefully that will paint a good picture for you all to understand. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, let's get started by creating a new Xcode project. And we're gonna stick with a single view application and I'm gonna call this project my weak versus strong. And let's save this on our desktop. And let's do two examples that will really hopefully help clarify what weak versus strong is as well as the kind of the point behind it and when you should use one or the other. So as I very briefly mentioned in the beginning of this video, weak versus strong simply notates how a memory, how a object's memory should be retained. So a bit of background and a history lesson, if you will, back in the day, you didn't have what we use today that's called automatic reference counting. And us iOS developers would have to call things like uh, like if we had an object called foo, we would have to say foo.allocate that would allocate some memory for it. And whenever we were getting rid of an object or a class or even a view controller was disappearing, we would have to do something like foo.release and that would tell the system to release the memory. And you can imagine that memory management became difficult because in big apps you have tons of objects. Sometimes you release an object before it's done being used and it's basically just a whole mess. So then Apple came out with this thing called automatic reference counting. So automatic reference counting is the notion that if an object is strong, it increments a count that the system manages that you have this object retained in memory and anything else that's strongly retained increments the number by one. 
And whenever it's uh, deallocated, it decrements it. But then there's a difference between strong and weak. And the best example that I like to give, and for some reason this helps people understand, is when you strongly retain something, you're basically creating a strong pointer to it. And I know I use the word strong in the definition, but bear with me. So a weak pointer would be something like holding a balloon. So if you think of a child that's holding a balloon, the child is the strongly retained object, and the balloon is the weak object. And the relationship there is if the child that's holding the floating balloon goes away, so does the balloon. Basically, the weak object is at the mercy of the strong object that is pointing to it. And that is truly the entire definition of weak versus strong. So you can imagine a problem that you can hit is what if two objects are strongly pointing to each other? So the balloon needs the person to be there to hold it and the person needs the balloon, right? And if the person lets go of the balloon, the balloon wouldn't float away. That's what we devs would call a retain cycle or a memory leak. And I'll mention that that's a very, very common interview question. So let's actually show an example instead of me kind of going on about this theory. So let's say we wanted to show an alert view, just a modal pop-up alert on our controller. We're going to do it in view did appear view did appear, that's an animated, and I'm just using the alert as an example. This applies to a lot of cases, but if we just create a basic alert, which is an alert controller with a uh, title, a message, and a style, we'll say title is title, message is message, and style is alert, and we're going to present this alert, animated true, and we're also going to add one action to the alert with a title of, let's just call it done, style will be cancel, whoops, and this takes a closure with the actual action in. And let's say we had a function we wanted to call, we'll call it do something. And in here we would simply call self.do something. Now, for those of you who kind of have a bit of a background, you'll see that this is a problem. So this is actually a retain cycle and we would leak memory if we did it this way. So let me explain a little bit more. So we have this object called view controller. This view controller creates this alert, which under the hood is just another controller. When an alerts action, in this case, this done button gets triggered in this completion block in the handler closure, it references self and basically says, call this function, which is off of self. Self in this case refers back to this view controller. So you can kind of get a picture of this view controller would be at this point in time referencing the alert. But then when the alert, its action gets kicked off, it then references back to this view controller to get this method. So it becomes a loop. So the view controller can't be allocated here because obviously it's holding onto the alert. But now the alert, even once it goes away off screen, once you hit the button and dismissed it, it can't be deallocated and be released from memory because it's referencing back to self to get at this function down here. So how do we fix this? So it's super simple. And if you've done a little bit of Swift, you've probably seen this all over the place, but we need to reference self in a weak fashion. So what we are going to pass in in brackets here is weak self. And now if you actually just call self dot this, you'll get a warning. And what it's going to tell you is or you'll get an error and it's going to tell you basically self is optional. So we're going to do self optional and our code didn't change very much here, but this will now guarantee that the actual retain loop gets broken. So the view controller would be referencing the alert when the alert pops up. When we hit the done button, It'll optionally, because this is weak self, we're pointing back to the view controller in a weak fashion, which is why we use the keyword weak. We would in a weak fashion point back to this function on self, which is the view controller. So if you ever see weak self in any type of closure, when you want to return, basically reference back to self, that's what it's doing. So let's do two more examples that will hopefully help illustrate this. Uh, and like I said, that balloon example that I gave is, a, in my mind, a really good way to think about it. Anything weak has to be retained by something that's strong. 
If a child holding a balloon goes away and the balloon has helium in it, for this example, the balloon will float away. There's nothing holding onto the balloon. So if we do another example, and let's say we have a private function of uh, get data, let's say it gets, a, gets some data from like some URL uh, string, and it has a completion handler. And this completion handler, let's say, returns uh, some data. And this whole block returns void. And um, let's see. So then we would, let's just pass in the completion nil. And let's have another function. It's called foo. And we can say self.getData. And then we can say data in. And let's say we had a property on our class and it was called data and it was data optional. And let's say once we call this function up here and we come back via the completion handler, we wanted to assign the result to this property on self, you could do this. But again, that causes a memory leak and this should be capital. This causes a memory leak. And the reason it causes a memory leak again is you can actually get rid of that. From this controller, we are referencing this get data, right? So it comes to this function and it's hypothetically doing some asynchronous task. Let's say it's getting some like data from like the internet, some JSON, some API call. Once you call completion, we come back to this closure and we reference on self assign it to data. So we now have a memory leak because we have a retain cycle. So what you want to do is add weak self. And you can do self question mark because now self is weakly retained and you can assign the data. What I meant to do is that originally. So if we didn't have weak self, basically you would do that. Functionally, it's correct, but you're leaking memory and you really don't want to leak memory. And especially professionally in large projects, it is extremely important. Another thing that you guys will probably see when people reference weak self is people like to do this. and I myself like to do this, you would basically just unwrap self. So because self comes back as optional and you're still using it in a weak fashion because you're retaining it in a weak format. But instead of doing self optional, you can say strong self.data. This gives you a pointer back to whatever you're retaining weekly, which would be this controller. And not to confuse all and say that only controllers or self can be retained weekly, you could retain anything weekly. Uh, so by that, let me actually give an example of how you could retain something else in a weak format. So oftentimes, uh, you will assign a delegate, which is just a protocol. So like there's a table view delegate or some type of protocol you might want to assign. So let's say we create a protocol and we just call this some delegate and it's going to be any object. And let's say we have a function in here, like did tap thing and let's create another class and let's say we wanted a delegate property off of this view controller let's say we had a var delegate and this is going to be some delegate optional here we can instantiate our controller like that and let me actually put this in a function or an initializer and let's say we say vc.delegate is self this would be some delegate and then because it's that some delegate, we need to conform and bring in that function like so. My point is when we do this this way, this is actually also a memory leak. And the way that I'm able to understand that it's a memory leak, uh, it's not really kind of experience or guess and checking. The way that you should acknowledge that this is a memory leak is so this foo class creates an instance of view controller. So the foo is being basically pointing to view controller in a strong fashion. Then on view controller, you have a property called delegate and you're assigning the delegate to self. So now this view controller is pointing back to the foo class in a strong fashion. So when foo and view controller are both pointing together, it creates a cycle, which will that should set off basically alarms in your head saying this is a memory cycle. It's a retain cycle. Hence it's a memory leak. So how do we fix it? It's pretty easy. Basically, you want to say weak var. So by marking this weak, none of this code needs to change. However, the thing that's different is once this view controller goes away, the reference to delegate will be 
basically dropped and deallocated because it's weak. This is very similar to the example of a child holding a balloon. Once the child goes away, in this case Fu, the balloon, which is the delegate that we're pointing to, inherently goes away because it's weak, right? Its memory is managed and pointed to by this other strong object. So that's really all I really wanted to cover in this video. Weak self and strong versus weak is extremely important. And hopefully these few small examples make it clear what it is. Uh, don't hesitate to leave comments below if that's not clear, if I should do a follow-up video. I know myself, uh, many, many years ago when I first started doing iOS, almost 10 years now, it took me quite a while to grasp how important this was and also then use it properly. Because oftentimes what happens is you'll start building stuff. And like, for example, in this case, if we didn't have weak self and just did self dot call this function, there's no warning or error or anything here. And it functionally works. So part of it is, well, this works perfectly fine. Why do I quite frankly care? So uh, hopefully now you know why you care, because if you use too much memory, your app is actually going to crash uh, and it makes your app slow. It makes uh, performance bad. It makes so many things just are just not great things happen. So that said, if you haven't smashed that like button down below already for the YouTube algorithm, make sure you do so. Uh, subscribe while you're at it if you're new to the channel. I love uh, hearing from all of you guys, so throw something down in the comments. Let me know if this was helpful and if you have any suggestions for future videos. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.